Now, the Magna Carta had a major impact on the kings and queens of England. They were forced to reform their powers, as you say, far more than the monarchs of other realms who enjoyed near absolute authority until their monarchies were dissolved. Now, I'm sure the likes of the great David Flint would argue that this evolution of power is why we still have a king today. Reading your work, John, it almost I'm almost fit to argue that the English kings act sort of like a free market, locked in competition between ideas, military force, loyalty and political savvy. Now, underpinning their constant friction, you have the, the taxation and the support of the people. And that's the chief currency which all, think, uh, all kings are forced to compete for. Now, in this mess of kings, you devote an entire chapter to what you call the foulness of King John. And I quite like this passage, so I'm going to quote it from the Constitutional History of England I think it's great. Quote, he was the very worst of all kings, a man whom no oaths could bind, no pressure of conscience, no consideration of policy, restrained from evil, a faithless son, a treacherous brother, an ungrateful master to his people, a hated tyrant, polluted with every crime that could disgrace a man, false to every obligation that should bind a king. He lost half his inheritance by sloth and ruined, the desolate, uh, ruined and desolated the rest, end quote. Uh, John, I can think of a few contemporary prime ministers that might fit that description. Do you find it interesting that such an unloved king, full of mistakes, made such a valuable contribution to our world? Well, I don't think it's a contradiction at all because someone as bad as that had to give us some good. And one of the things that, uh, as you mentioned, the great David Flint, um, what someone like David Flint, I think, would acknowledge is that one of the glories, and I'll use that term deliberately, the glories of British history is that concept of consent that goes back 800 years and arguably more than 800 years. It has allowed um, the British, the um, United Kingdom, as we know it today, to develop relatively peacefully, notwithstanding its wars, compared to continental Europe. The change of British history, of the British parliamentary process, was by and large gradual, managed, directed and built on an understanding and built on some history and convention. The vast tumults of European history, and we'll look to the French Revolution, for example, are examples of systems that did not have a self correcting mechanism within their processes. So when we have the French Revolution raging and we have debates about the divine right of kings, the British 100 years before had cut off uh, the head of their king and said, no, Parliament will rule. And I think um, coming back to history in our own country, we are so lucky that we have that tradition of British constitutional and parliamentary change, not the traditions of so many other places, unfortunately. 